In this tutorial, I will attempt to show you how to create a backing track that synchronizes the playing of music, the controlling of lights, and the display of video. I'm going to use the Reaper Digital Audio Workstation to send MIDI information using a virtual MIDI cable program called Loop B to a light controller program named Freestyler and then control the lights through a hardware DMX controller named NTEC Open USB DMX. Here's a list of what you need to do this. You should go ahead and download and install Reaper, Freestyler, Loop B, and also the NTEC Open USB DMX driver. Reaper is an excellent digital audio workstation that you can try for free and it costs uh, $60 to purchase. Freestyler and Loopy are both free, and the DMX controller was $70, and the 5-pin to 3-pin converter that I needed was $15. So that's a total of $145. If you purchase the Entech Open DMX USB, you'll probably need the 3-pin female to 5-pin male adapter if you're going to connect the lights to uh, standard XLR cables. Uh, I found there were less expensive USB DMX controllers and also some uh, very much more expensive ones, but uh, I found this one to be fairly inexpensive but easy to set up and reliable so far. The link to download the driver is in the bottom right corner of the screen. The first step is controlling the lights using Freestyler. Plug the USB cable into the Entech adapter and the other end into the USB port of your computer. Now we'll start the Freestyler program, select Setup, Freestyler Setup, and we'll select the Entech OpenDMX from the drop-down box and click Save. Now I'm going to add my two lights to the Freestyler program. I have a Chave Hemisphere 5 and a Chave 200B. So I go to Setup, Add Removed Fixtures, and in my case there's an existing fixture file for both of the lights I'm going to add. If there's not an existing fixture file for your light, uh, you can create one with the included fixture creator program. And also there's a number of tutorials on creating and adding fixtures to Freestyler on YouTube if you're having a problem. So I can scroll down uh, to the manufacturer and expand it and then look for my light fixture. Uh, also I can go into the search box and I'll type in Hemi and search for that. And then I'll just highlight Chave Hemisphere and click this right arrow to add it to the program. Here you can see the address information. Um, this light will start at address 1. It's a 4 channel light and so it will use channels 1 to 4. Uh, the light fixture will need to be set to match this address. The hemisphere light is set digitally. Okay, so I'm going to connect my light now. I run the XLR cable from the Entech Open DMX USB to the in of the hemisphere. And now I'll uh, press the menu button to get to the address area. And I'll use the up and down arrow keys to set the address to 001. Uh, now I'll add my other light. It's the Chave 200B. Go to my search box, type 200B, and here I, I find my light, I highlight it, click on the right arrow to add it. Now it automatically starts at um, address number 5, and uh, it goes to channel 10. So again, this light fixture needs to be set to match this address. Uh, the 200B light is set using manual dip switches and you can see um, to help you out there's a little indication of what the pattern should look like in case you're not up on your binary. Um, so you set the dip switches. 
So now I'll run an XLR cable from the out of the hemisphere uh, to the in of the 200B. Now I'll go back to Freestyler. I'll click close after my fixtures have been added. And now I want to test to see if I can control the lights manually. So the first thing I do, I click on my hemisphere picture. Now you'll notice that the name changes color to a light blue. And over on the right side here, I can bring out these sliders. And I move the sliders to confirm that the lights are connected properly and being controlled. There's another way to control the lights. You can click on Window, All. This provides a quick way to select various combinations of color, flashing and spinning. Now each light will have different windows and different options. So I click on the gray area away from any of the windows to deselect the lights. Now I'll click on the 200B picture. Again, click on the side arrow to um, bring out the sliders and adjust the the different the dimmer, the color, etc. And um, make sure it's being controlled properly too. And I can see that it's working. So now we know uh, both lights are properly connected and being controlled by Freestyler. Our next step is to create scenes. You set all the lights to do what you want and save it as a snapshot or scene. Um, I'm going to create two simple scenes to demonstrate the method. I'll create um, one scene with the hemisphere not moving and has white light and the 200B will be red. And then I'll create a second scene with the hemisphere spinning with colored light and the 200B will be blue. Okay, to start this, we click on Window, Create Sequence. We'll select the first light, uh, set the color to white, set the spin to stopped. Select the other light, set the color to red. And we click this plus. Now you could go on and uh, create more scenes, click the plus, create another scene, click plus again, and have a whole bunch of scenes that would play one after another. But I'm sticking to one variation per scene to make it really simple. Now we click Save As. Check the Add to Queue and Add button. Uh, we provide a name and then click Save. Okay, now I'm going to create another scene with the hemisphere spinning and colored and the 200B will be blue. So I pick the first one, make the adjustments, And then I select the other light, change the light to blue, and we click plus. And then I click save as, make sure I've checked the add to queue and add button. I'll give it a name and click save. These two scenes have been added to the queue, so now we'll take a look. I'll click the X to close the sequence creator. And now I click on Window and Queue. And here are the two scenes that I created. I'll click on the arrow beside the first queue, and the red scene appears. 
Now I'll click the stop button. And then I'll click the arrow beside the second cube and the blue scene appears. And now I'll stop that one. Now this is the list of scenes that I'll be controlling from my Reaper Digital Audio Workstation. So now we'll go to the LoopB website, uh, if you haven't already. Download and install LoopB1. And this is the program that works as a virtual MIDI cable that allows Reaper to send MIDI information to Freestyler. Um, you run LoopB1 and it just works in the background. So now we'll go to Freestyler and set it up so that it can be controlled by MIDI. Open Freestyler to the main page. Setup. Freestyler Setup. External Control. Then MIDI Control. And we need to select Loop B1 from the Input drop-down box. Then we click Start and Save. Now we need to go to Reaper and set it up so that control Freestyler using the same virtual MIDI cable. So let's open up Reaper to the main page. You go to Options, Preferences, MIDI Devices, and in the Output section, we right-click on the Loop B internal MIDI and enable output. Click OK. Now I'll create a MIDI file that will control the lights. You select Insert and pick New MIDI Item. Now we double click on the MIDI file and then double click on the C3 to add a MIDI note. Now I need to send that note to the virtual MIDI cable. So I click on the small sends receives icon and in the MIDI hardware output section I select loopy internal MIDI and then I'll click X to close the window. Now you can control a freestyler function using any note you want, but I've decided to set up a list of notes and the functions that they will control and use that for consistency. Uh, there are dozens of functions to control and I don't know what they all do, but here's a small number of the ones that I'm going to be using. Here's a list that I made. Um, I'm going to be using note C3 with a MIDI value of 48 to start sequence 1. I'm going to use note C sharp 3 with a MIDI value of 49 to start sequence 2. I'm going to use a note C5 with a MIDI value of 72 to stop sequence 1 and I'm going to use C sharp 5 with a MIDI value of 73 to stop sequence 2. Now we need to set up Freestyler to determine what a specific note sent from Reaper will control. And we need to select a function in Freestyler and to do that we go Setup, Freestyler Setup, and we go to External Controls and down to MIDI Control. And we scroll down until we find uh, Start Sequence 1 and we click in the Note In box of, of that Start Sequence 1. Now what we're going to have to do is click on Learn so that we can learn what note coming from Reaper is going to control this particular function. So um, here's how we do that. We go back to Reaper and I've still got my C3 note put in and I'm going to select these four bars of uh, MIDI and then I'll, I'll make sure my repeat, uh, toggle repeat is on and I'm going to click the start and it'll keep playing those four bars and also it will keep sending that C3 note. So I'll go back to Freestyler now and I can see that um, 
it, every fourth bar it's sending that information again so I'll click learn and it put in here that it's sending note uh, 48 and now I'll just click save now before I do I want to note that it says that it's sending it at a velocity of 127 so we need to make sure that our velocity is 127 or else it won't work I'll click save now I'm going to go back to um, Reaper and it's still sending that note and Freestyler should have learned that that should turn on the sequence but it's not turning it on right now and I note that my velocity is not up to 127 so I'm going to grab that put it up to 127 and now as soon as it hits that note it actually turned on sequence number one Okay, we will repeat this process for the other three sequences that we want to control. So I'll go into Freestyler, I'll go back to my functions, setup, Freestyler setup, and now I want to control start sequence two. I'll click in there, close, go back to Reaper, and I'm going to pause this for a second move this note from C3 up to C sharp 3 play again go back to freestyler and now it's sending a 49 instead of 48 I'll click learn and it puts a 49 in there I'll move to uh, the next one I wanted to do was the stop sequence one so I'll scroll down a bit stop sequence one click in the note in field of that back to reaper and this time i wanted a c5 note so i'll click on that and drag it up so c5 go back to freestyler click on learn and the next one is stop sequence 2 click in there back to Reaper move it up to C sharp 5 one higher back to freestyler and learn and there I have my four notes all learned. So what we can do now is we'll go and create a MIDI file, put all those four notes in and control it. I'll click save. Now I've set up the ability to control two light sequences using Reaper. Now let's create a file in Reaper to control music, video, and light. So I'll switch to Reaper. I'll close the MIDI editor down and I'll start a new project file with file new project and to begin I'll add some music and to do that I'll go insert media file I'll select this music file and then click open uh, next I want to add the video so I'm going to double click below the music track to insert a new track. I'll make sure I'm at the start and insert media file. I'll select the video file and click open. And I want to trim this video to 40 seconds to match the music. So I'll do that. And also I want to be able to see the video so I'll click view and video window. I'll double click again below the video track to add another new track. Make sure I'm at the start. I'll click insert new MIDI item. Now I want to expand this MIDI item to be 40 seconds to match the music and the video but when I do this I get a, a lot of repeats. So what I need to do is I right click on the MIDI file, I click 
item settings and I clear the loop item source. And now I can extend the MIDI item to 40 seconds. If we want the MIDI to be sent from Reaper to Freestyler, we have to click on this send receive icon and make sure we set the MIDI hardware output to be loop B internal MIDI. Now we insert the MIDI notes to control the lights. I'll double click on the MIDI file and I just listen to the music and decide where I want to put the changes. I put a C3 in for the red sequence and a C sharp 3 in for the blue sequence. And um, now that it's all done, let's take a look and see how it works. I've got my uh, music a video over here and the MIDI to control the lights. Press play. The lights come on at the very beginning. The red sequence. There's a blue sequence change. The red sequence change. Thank you.